Okay, this question says, a single crystal of nickel has a critical shear stress of 5.7 megapascals. It then says that if a stress of 13.7 megapascals is applied along the 001 direction of a unit cell, then what will be the resolved shear stress for the 111 OBAR11 slip system? And then, you know, once you have that, can you answer the question, will the crystal exhibit slip or not? So this type of question is known as Schmidt's Law, and it has to do with the typical drawing that you might have seen that looks something like this. You have a single crystal, and you're applying a load like this, in tension. And now, if your slip plane happens to be lined up exactly with it, then it's simple, because your resolved shear stress is just going to be the stress that you're applying to it. But in most cases, that's not what's happening. Instead, you have some sort of plane within your crystal, say something like that. That might be your slip plane. And then you have some direction in that plane, say out this way, right? And so what you really need to know is if that's the direction normal to your slip plane, right? That's got a little right angle there. Then you care about these two angles, right here and right here. So between, let's see, we call this angle between the normal phi and we call this one right here lambda, right? And so essentially, even though you're applying a load uh, perpendicular to the surface, on some plane there's actually going to be a shear stress, right? So how this works out is that the resolved shear stress, RSS, is going to be equal to the applied stress multiplied by the cosine of those two angles, phi and the cosine of lambda, right? Now I think it's more useful to think of this in terms of the actual unit cell, so let's sketch that really quickly. Our unit cell looks like this. Our slip plane is the 111, which is located right there. We're loading on the 001 direction, so we're pulling it straight up there. The direction of slip is in the 0 bar 11 direction, which is that way. And then the normal would be along from this corner to that corner, right? So that right there would be our phi. This one over here is going to be lambda. So geometrically, you might be able to look at this and guess what those angles are. But in more difficult planes where it's not as obvious, where it's not like an easy 45 degree or something like that, it's going to be much more advantageous to learn how to figure out the angle between any two vectors. And we have a great tool for doing that. So if you have two arbitrary vectors, let's call them A and B, and they have an angle between them, let's call it theta, then we know that cosine of theta, which is you know exactly what we're looking for, the cosine of an angle, that's going to be equal to a dot b, so the dot product of those two vectors, divided by the length of those vectors, the length of a times the length of b. So now that we know how to do that, let's go ahead and dive into this problem. Um, we have our loading direction, right, 0, 1, 1, we have our slip plane, and we have our slip direction. Now one additional thing to notice, I drew here, this is the 1, 1, 1 direction, and that happens to be normal to the 1, 1, 1 plane, but that's only the case in cubic systems. If this was a non-cubic system, then we would have to figure out what the normal is, and you do that by picking two directions in the plane and taking their cross product, and then that's going to be orthogonal. So that will get you the, or, the orthogonal vector. In this case, it's the same. So we can just use the 111. So let's go ahead and dive into this. We know what the applied stress is. It's 13.7. So tau, let's call this our uh, resolved shear stress, is going to be equal to 13.7 megapascals multiplied by the cosine of the angle between our loading direction and the slip direction. That's between, again, this here is the 0, 0, 001 direction, and this one over here is the 0 bar 11 one direction. So the dot product is going to be between 0, 0, 001 and 0, 01 bar 1. So let's take that dot product. That's going to be 0 times 0 plus 0 times negative 1 plus 1 times 1. That's all going to be divided by the length of a 0, 0, 1. So that's going to be 1 squared, square roots, that's just 1. And then the square root of negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, that's just going to be 2, right? This is all going to be multiplied by the dot product of now 
the loading direction, which is still 0, 0, 001, but now the normal to the slip plane, which is the 111. So let's go ahead and do that one. So we're going to end up again with 0 times 1 plus 0 times 1 plus 1 times 1. So this is going to be 1 in the numerator again. This time in the denominator, we have 1 times the square root of 3. Just 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. When I go ahead and plug all these in, this turns out to be 13.7 megapascals multiplied by 1 over square root of 2 multiplied by 1 over square root of 3. And punching that in, we find that the resolved shear stress for this system with that load is going to be 5.59 megapascals. 5.593 megapascals, which technically is just smaller than the 5.7 megapascals, which is the critical resolved shear stress. So technically in this system, you have to get to 5.7 megapascals for your resolved shear stress for it to slip. And since we're just below that, technically it wouldn't shear. In practice, it's pretty close. And so if it's off even by a little bit, you actually might get shear. But technically, you wouldn't expect shear in this case. That's Schmidt's Law.